established in 2021 um and uh, um, it's been growing steadily uh, ever since and uh, we had very countries uh, lots of uh, interesting discussions around blockchain and and digital assets um so we are um, very thankful to uh, to all of you who, who have uh, come here today um and there are uh, other people who are uh, listening in uh, in the waiting area the lobbies and the different instances here in the metaverse so i would like to uh, invite uh, uh, lord mcnichol of west kilbride uh, who is uh, a parliamentarian uh, from house of uh, lords and uh, uh, we will uh, uh, love to hear his thoughts on on blockchain emerging technologies yeah. uh, as a force for good and especially around policy making around these technologies and what the UK needs to be doing in the next few years to build the economies of a scale and how the UK economy can benefit from it. So thank you very much, everyone. And uh, over to you, uh, Ian. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you um, very much for that and for that um, introduction. And it's, it's great to be here again and invited to your summit in the metaverse. And thanks for your help in getting me prepared for it. And I'm glad to have the chance to talk um, to you all about how we, um, as a community, <coughs> can support these emerging technologies and how we can help to make the UK a leader in blockchain, in fintech, um, and in these emerging technologies as we move forward, and how we can work with government for that to happen. So before I start, a little bit um, about me. I've been in the House of Lords now for six years. I'm, I was Shadow Minister in the Lords for Business and Trade, dealing with international trade and business issues. And as well as that, for three years, I was one of the deputy speakers. So during COVID, when Jacob Rees in the House of Commons brought the House of Commons back physically. During lockdown, they needed um, the House of Lords to, to sit physically. But all of the current speakers were over the age of 70. They were all too old um, and had shielding letters, so couldn't make it into Parliament. So they needed a youngster, um, to which my kids um, rolled their eyes um, when I was asked. Um, but they needed someone younger to come in. So I ended up chairing Parliament for three years, which was just fascinating. <clears throat> Before coming to the House of Lords, I was General Secretary of the Labour Party from 2011 to 2018. The general secretary is the same as the chief executive officer, the CEO. So I was in charge of the money, the staffing, the campaigning, fundraising, political management, not the policy. That was the preserve of the leader and the shadow cabinet. To put it nicely, I, those years running the Labour Party could have been described as our political phase, our difficult political phase. I'm in opposition through Ed Miliband and Jeremy Corbyn's leadership, but the reality was it was a very, very tough time um, for the Labour Party. The job itself is the most incredible job, but losing elections is not um, a position that I like to be in, um, or many politicians like to be in. Now, Unfortunately, Keir Starmer um, has revolutionised the Labour Party and brought us back to a position um, where um, we won the last election um, from such a bad position in 2019. Keir and Rachel Reeves, the shadow, not the shadow anymore, the cabinet and the, the team running government have an opportunity um, to, to rebuild and to reshape our country and you on this metaverse within this forum within the summit have an opportunity to help shape that and it is going to require all of your help um, and that's largely because of not the misunderstanding but just the lack of knowledge around digital assets around blockchain um, around fintech, around AI, around um, CBDCs, the, 
the new technologies that have the opportunity to shape the future of Britain um, are not understood in the way that they need to or should be. And that's why hopefully me speaking to you will stimulate some of you, especially those of you in the UK, to reach out to your politicians and to try and help them. And um, because there's fear, there's fear of the unknown, there's fear of things that you can't control, and there's fear um, of some of those new technologies. And you see that in the newspapers and the language around AI um, and large language models and where that's developing. So let me take a step back a little bit and then we can work through it. The financial sector, which is partly where blockchain sits, and obviously a lot of it is outside of it as well, but if the financial sector is the sector I know best. Um, it's, it's huge, it's big business for Britain, contributes about 12% of our economic output, over £100 billion to the Treasury each year, and supports over 1 million jobs throughout the country. Labour's job and Labour's priority in government, um, their mission, as set out by Keir before the election, um, is to achieve the highest sustained growth in the G7. For that to happen, Labour, this new government, needs a financial service sector that works and grows. because. When it grows, the country grows with it. I'm, and for that to happen, we need to deliver, or the Labour government needs to deliver, a stable, consistent policy environment that allows the industry to do what it does best. Now, blockchain and financial tech, fintechs, I'm, are already incredibly important, an incredibly important sector, and that's only going to grow. And from my conversations, I know that Labour um, is struck not only by the capacity of fintechs to continue to revolutionise the way we do finance, but also by its capacity to promote great social change and improve everyday lives of people across the UK. And you can see this, fintech is leading the way in finance, it's leading the way in health technology, leading the way in financial inclusion. So with regards to green um, finance, whether that's in creating a lending market for SME businesses to access funding, um, they need to be able, um, where they're looking to reach their net zero targets. Examples like um, funding options green in the green finance market, Something which is vital when it comes to, when you consider SMEs contribute one third of the UK's carbon emissions and often face some of the biggest challenges when it comes to adopting um, a green future. So new technologies leading the way. And the others, in it, or, or if you look at aiming to incentivise greener behavioural changes in consumers, um, Earth chains use of blockchain to show customers their real time carbon footprint and gain emissions insight from their spending data. These are the technologies, these are the businesses um, that government should be looking to and helping um, support. And blockchain technology is a great example of how fintech can be utilized for environmental, for saving the environment for environmental purposes as transactions through the supply chain can be recorded on the blockchain or in blockchain. Consumers can trace their ecological footprint um, and products all the way back to their source. And this is really important because it has the potential to reform, transform scope three supply chain reporting um, to help um, our planet. I've also been involved in a number of fintechs um, and new technologies myself. So I come at this not just as a politician, but as a non-exec um, and an advisor. One of those um, companies is an AML KYC business called Astra Enterprise. 
and the other is an ethical lending business, which I've been involved with for the past five years, um, called Salad Money. And I think I mentioned this last time I was here. Salad Money Lends, this business, UK business, fintech business, lends in the unsecure, unsecured, near and subprime markets using AI machine learning, but on the back of open banking to make all of our lending decisions. And this is done in an ethical way, an ethical way to help those with no credit footprint, possibly CCJs, county court judgments against them, or thin credit files. People are looking to rebuild their credit scores because without a clear credit history I'm in the UK, many people are forced to unethical lenders, loan sharks, or high cost credit. The CMA in delivering open banking, I think nearly a decade ago, um, helped both a new industry spring up and in doing so, I'm new innovations to drive new ways of helping people. And that's where all of you um, come in. Labour will seek to prevent the UK from slipping behind and in the fast moving international no borders industry, that's not easy um, to do. If you look back at the 2021 Khalifa review, it showed that the UK has the capacity and the underlying qualities needed to make us a world leader in fintech. It's the job of this new Labour government to make sure as a country we take full advantage I'm of those skills. And the UK, as we all know, needs a government not just willing but eager to partnership with the sector. I touched a little bit on AI um, before, just say a little bit more about it. Artificial intelligence remains a highly complex area and any government, but specifically this, labor, this new Labour government, needs to develop a formal strategy and sets of legislations and regulatory frameworks that cover um, AI. But what is clear um, to me, hopefully to all of us, is that AI must be and should be used to innovate the way that we work, the way that we live, the way that our public sector, public services functions, and it can spearhead the growth to unlock that access to public data in the right way and public spending. Let's look at what Wes Streeting, the health secretary, was saying only last week. Um, data and AI will need to, not should, will need to play a part in saving our national health service. And it's for us to shape um, the frame uh, of that. Again, touched a little bit on open banking. Um, what comes next? Open finance, how far does it go? How does blockchain um, interact? with open finance. We need to build upon the successes of open banking to deliver a roadmap around and for open finance, expanding the system to include possibly mortgages, pensions, insurance data, and utilizing the technology to support savings and investments for households, not just current account banks. I think one of the other things that we'll see, I've only got a few more minutes, um, is the move on the digital pound, CBDC. The Bank of England are already exploring and developing um, how that could work. It will need legislative oversight from Parliament. That hasn't happened yet. We're still waiting to see when and if that comes, but if we are going to deliver some form of digital pound, it will need to be approved through Parliament. Again, we see other countries, other jurisdictions rolling this out quickly. 
and not just within their own countries, across neighbouring countries and areas that they want to trade and do trade with. The UK cannot be left behind on this. But then there's a question about who delivers it and where it sits. Um, so again, an opportunity for yourselves to be involved um, in that. Securities and tokenisation was actually mentioned within Labour Party manifesto. The expanding use of DLT and the tokenisation of securities in particular also presents an exciting opportunity, one that could be worth hundreds of billions of dollars globally by the end of the decade. We want the UK, I want the UK to take advantage of this um, and it should be the ambition of a Labour government to be the global hub of securities, tokenisation, and that's something that Crypto UK um, have welcomed and called for. Our excitement, however, cannot and must not be overshadowed by the risk associated with speculative currencies. Crypto fraud, some stablecoin collapses, FTX scandal have hit and served the industry badly. Labour needs to assess the ways in which it can prioritise consumer protection as well as not undermining the innovative opportunities um, that sit there. I'll just touch a little bit on regulation. Regulation is a important. Regulation protects the businesses, the industries, more importantly it protects the consumers and the customers and the clients, especially when data um, is involved. But the regulation needs to be proportionate and the regulation cannot undermine the ability of the industry and those startups and those people across the UK looking to develop and come up with new ideas and new ways of working and new uses for blockchain and fintech cannot stifle that innovation because if it does, it would just cause the industry to collapse. So with that, I will finish. Just want to say there's an all party parliamentary group, an APPG, across the across the houses, House of Lords and Commons, across the political spectrum, Labour, Conservative and Liberal Democrat. And we're looking to come together and build our blockchain all party parliamentary group in this new parliament. And it would be great if any or all of you could basically contact your members of parliament and just let them know about the exciting opportunities, the exciting technologies. Um, and how they can help shape um, shape that. So thank you very much. What a pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Lord McNichol. It was an excellent speech. And I agree on all of the points you've, you've raised. Um, really, there is a big monumental shift. In the global economy, if you look at this, uh, the shift which is driven by decentralization, tokenization, and, and all of the things you mentioned. And in fact, there's a recent report which um, um, uh, there's some data from PwC that blockchain will boost global GDP by $1.6 trillion by 2030. And for the UK alone, there is a potential for $57 billion um, to be generated uh, in the UK economy alone. And uh, <clears throat> this is extremely important. And I think the point also you mentioned about um, uh, holistic, multidisciplinary team working with uh, policymakers mm -hmm. and industry coming together, uh, uh, which is yeah. uh, an extremely important Thank point. You. Yes, I really indeed. enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so, um,
the uh, the point uh, Lord McNichol mentioned about the All Party Parliamentary Group, you may be aware of, uh, uh, you may have seen or attended our previous roundtables in Parliament. The last one was uh, was a packed room, hugely successful. We had over 100 industry representatives in May. This is just before the general election was called. And you may have met uh, some of the uh, members um, and, um, and, and chairs and vice chairs. Um, Natalie Elphick, uh, who is uh, uh, no longer MP, but she did a fantastic job uh, as a chair of the group. And, and last year, she was one of the first speakers, um, parliamentarians in the history of British politics <clears throat> to deliver a keynote speech in the metaverse um, and uh, really laid out the plan for um, uh, the group and raised some very important uh, points regarding how you can benefit from these uh, technologies. So we are really thankful to all the policymakers and looking forward to work with um, new uh, members of parliament uh, we have a lot of new members in, after this election so we would welcome them uh, to join the group as uh, lord mcnichol said you can get in touch with your own uh, uh, mps in local mps and and tell them about blockchain um, and how these technologies can benefit the economy uh, because the impact has been seen and felt across uh, industry uh, from all the things that Lord McNichol mentioned, the areas such as uh, um, public public governance, CBDCs, tokenization, uh, securities, social goods, supply chains, healthcare, um, and 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 all the other major domains. So very important that we um, we look at it as kind of an infrastructure technology, and not just a very narrow um, uh, area of uh, of practice. This is uh, uh, now being studied in, in, in more than 800 universities around the globe, blockchain technology. Uh, I'm an academic. I'm in touch with uh, a lot of um, uh, professors globally who are studying, teaching on blockchain. And in just to give you an idea, in the just past 12 months alone, there are more than 16,000 research papers have been published on blockchain and crypto assets and Web3 topic alone. 16,000 uh, peer-reviewed papers. So this is, um, it, is, it is growing very, very fast. And more and more applications of blockchain are coming, uh, which, uh, which industry is working on.